Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Um, I know you were told to sit down, but so I, you know, I was going to say to stand because of what we are representing here today is the blood of our Lord and Savior that died that we all might have a right to the tree of life. Uh, but I'll let you remain seated. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I just thank God this morning for giving me the opportunity to arise just one more day. Because you see, I know he don't have to allow me to get up not one day, not one second, not at all. But because he cares for each and every one of us, he allows me to get up each morning to travel on these dangerous roads and take me back home. And, and I love that. I appreciate that. Because we love a God that makes special, special care that we all survive these days. We see all the things that are going on in the world, how the world is getting more dangerous every second of a day. But God is yet making a way that we can survive these things that are happening in the world. We don't think about how close death come to us when we out in the streets in the world. You know how many people leave out their house going on trips or going to the store and never make it back home. But we make, made it back home. Do we ever thank God for that? I think sometimes we need to just stop taking a few moments to tell God, thank you. Amen. Thank, thank you, you thank that you, you saw me safely to the store and back home. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for me. Amen. We ought to just thank you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading is, is that love chapter. The pastor been hanging in there teaching on that love story. And I believe you're going to do a, a tremendous job today. But I'm going to do my best to read the scripture for you. It's coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Eight. Amen? Amen? Amen. The words begin with this saying here. It says, love is patient. Love is is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. I think you need to hear that one one more time. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angry. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never. Love never fails. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? I'm now going to do the morning prayer. I'm going to do my best to do what God put in my heart to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let us go to God's throne room. Father God, in the wonderful, sweet, sweet name, of Jesus. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for permitting us to arrive at this church, to come in and to hear a precious word from you about love. So many of us speak of love and truly don't understand what love is all about. 
your word just said that love is not self-seeking. But when we talk about love, we talk about the type of love that if you don't show me you love me first, I don't have any love for you. That's not this type of love that we just read about because this love doesn't seek itself, doesn't lift up itself, doesn't put forth its own needs and desires but it seeks other needs, other desires, other ones that can be lifted up with the love that I offer them. Not concerned about whether I receive it back, but I just want you to feel the glory of God that he has housed in me, that I might pass it on to those that come in my path. Lord, we thank you because now we're living under the threat of another world war. But Lord, we're trusting you. Oh, yes, sir. We're not listening to the news. We're not looking at TV to see what is going on in the world. We are trusting you because, Lord, your word say, if we ask, you would give it to us. So we are asking, Lord, for peace. We're asking, Lord, that you protect us in these dire times that we're living in. We're asking you, Lord, to fill our churches with those people that are out there in the world wondering what must I do, what can I do, how can I go on with all of the evil that is going on in the world. Touch their hearts, O oh Lord, and let them know that through you, all things are possible. Through you, we all can arrive at the kingdom of God. Through you and your death, Lord, you gave us the keys to eternal life. All we have to do is reach out and receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for going to that old rugged cross and hanging there for those long hours. Suffering, suffering, Lord, for such wicked people as us. But you stayed there and you died. If you didn't, you wasn't killed, you died. You gave up the ghost. No one could take it from you. You had to give it up. And you gave it up for each one of us that are here today. Each individual that are out there in the world today. Sometimes, Lord, I, I think about all of the anger that is going on in the world. All of the racism, all of the things that are happening in the world that we really don't understand. People thinking that we're different from other people. But I listen to the word when you talk about the human race. That's not a bunch of human races. They're just one human race, which means that we are all the same. Our colors are only skin deep and no deep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Let every heart in the building say thank you, Jesus. Let every heart in the building say, Lord, I love you. Come on and tell God how good he is. Oh, come on and worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on and tell God we serve a risen Savior. Come on, put a clapping in your hands. Come on, come on, put a praise on your lips. Come on and tell God thank you. Come on and tell God I love you, Jesus. Come on and tell God thank you for rising for me. Oh, come on and tell God hallelujah. Hallelujah! We serve a 
serve a risen Savior. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, God is not dead. God is not dead. He is still alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a simple song. The, meat, the beat may sound a little different, but you know it. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and put those hands together. Come on, God is a good God and we thank him on today. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, can you say that?
you, but I'm a happy about the blood. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because this is the day that our Lord got up out of that grave. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. Good morning, First Baptist, and good morning to our visiting friends. If you're visiting First Baptist for the first time, we would like for you to stand. We just want to recognize your presence. If you're visiting for the first time, please stand. Oh, let's praise God for those that have come today. Thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you. You may take your seats. We are delighted to have you here at First Baptist today. We hope something is sang, preached, or prayed that might resonate with you. 
and we hope that someday you would see in your heart to come back again. Our, our ushers will pass you a visitor's card, and we ask that you fill it out and uh, so that we can respond appropriately. If you will, just put your information on there, and we would love, I would love to get in touch with you. My name is Reginald Lowry. I'm the pastor of this glorious church on this corner right here on Highway 42, off Highway 42. I thank God for First Baptist Church. I do, I do. I want to share an email with you. Uh, I'm sorry, it was a text message uh, this morning that I received. And all of you, most of you know who this individual is. And this individual, I'll tell you his name at the end. Good morning, Pastor. Happy Easter to you and family and church family. I'm in good shape. Give everyone my love. That's Deacon Thomas Walker. He sent me that just a few minutes ago. Thought maybe I'll share it with you all. I'll continue to pray for Deacon Walker. He has his challenges, but God has been good to him. And he and I talk from time to time, and I'm so grateful uh, for him. He was the deacon, uh, uh, chairman of the deacon ministry uh, when I got here. I was looking at my plaque um, downstairs, and I saw his name as the chairman of the deacon ministry. There were other deacons that signed. I saw Deacon Sam Stark's name on there, uh, Linnell Robinson, and a couple of other deacons that signed, William Harris and somebody else that signed uh, when I came as pastor of this church. I'm so grateful for First Baptist and what it means in this community. And I thank God to see each and every one of you here this morning. I do have a few announcements, uh, but before we get started with the announcements, we do have a brief presentation from the ushers. This is their anniversary. I forgot what it's 90 something, but uh, 90 something years. It's, uh, are you ready? 94 years, I understand. 94 years. Uh, uh, we do have a representative from the ushers ministry that's going to come forward at this time to give a presentation. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. With the help of God and others and all members, we are celebrating 97 years of ushering. We would also like to light a candle in the members of our dear friend and past leader, Sister Edna Wilson Utley. Please join us in a silent prayer. We like this candle. Yes, please join us in a silent prayer. All the ushers, First Baptist Church, please stand. All ushers. God bless you, and amen. Amen. From the ushers. And we thank the Lord for Faye Howard and uh, Archie Gamble. Let's thank the Lord for their. And all the ushers that support us each and every Sunday. Thank you guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, who help out in this important ministry. This is very, very important. The first line of defense at the doors are the ushers. They are the ones who greet. And, and they can greet in a nice way. 
praise God and which can make uh, people feel invited in the life of the church. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Uh, my announcements, thank you, uh, Reverend Florence, for your leadership this morning and presiding over this service. Uh, we really appreciate you. We all miss you and your wife when you were away uh, last week, and thank God for your leadership. Uh, we want to quote our theme for uh, as we continue moving forward. The theme is behind you, my brothers and sisters, uh, if you will. Let's look at that. It's called, and I want to quote it together, and you can say it with me. Each one reach one. It's coming from Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. That's also behind me but it's also on the screen so we can quote that, that together. Let us quote the scripture together. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Each one reach one. Praise God. Bring somebody in the life of the church. So say, reach out to have the Lord save a soul. You can be instrumental in people getting saved at a time like this. Amen? I want to remind you that Bible study, study will resume Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We have a one-hour Bible study. We are now in the second chapter of James, James chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Read down to at least verse 13. I think there are about 26 verses. We're going to try to get to verse 13. We may or may not. We have such a wonderful time. Sometimes we just get through a few verses. But the important thing is that we are learning the word of God. So please come to Bible study. You can get there by going to our website and uh, just click on Bible study. Some of you I missed, and some of you I have not seen. But I would love to see you at Bible study. Please come. I believe you will be blessed uh, by the discussion. We have a very interesting discussion on Wednesday night. I also want to employ those of you that are here today to come to Sunday school, which starts at 9.30 each Sunday morning. We have some dynamic teachers, and uh, I, I guess you could call them teachers kind of slash preachers of, of the Word of God. Uh, you can learn so much if you come to Sunday school. So I implore you to come to Sunday school uh, every Sunday morning. I want to thank those of you that came on the, uh, for Friday night, the Good uh, Friday service at New Providence Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, some of you came online, and thank you so very much. It was a blessed time together with the Alliance churches in this community. We had such a delightful time. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to what the Lord is going to do in the days to come. And finally, I want to uh, say that uh, Reverend uh, Pastor, uh, or may I say, uh, Basil Creek now has a new pastor. I don't even know how to say his first name, but I'm not even going to try it. But uh, it's Reverend Patterson. Reverend Patterson is the new pastor there at uh, Basil Creek, but his installation service is going to take place first Sunday in June. Uh, for those of you that can, uh, they will be having installation service start that morning. I do expect you to come here in the morning, okay? I mean, I don't want everybody to go over to Basil Creek. You can go to afternoon. You can go to afternoon. I don't want to have an empty church. But anyway, go, you can support them in the afternoon. They will have an afternoon service as well. And uh, certainly, we want to support our brother in Christ. We're so happy for Basil Creek having a new pastor. That'll be June 5th, um, both the morning and afternoon services. Uh, God bless you. This, these are our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. At this time, we're going to have this wonderful, wonderful uh, choir to come back to us. And we're so happy to have our drama this morning. I didn't get her name, but uh, I, I, I know her. She's doing such a wonderful job. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so impressed. Lord, have mercy. I sure can't beat them like that. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining us this morning. And somebody pass her name to me so I know who she is. And God bless you and so forth. And we're happy to have our brother in Christ also right here on this wonderful organ. Uh, yes, Aaron here with us this morning. All right, now the choir is going to come forward and bring uh, a song. And then after which I will do what thus saith the Lord.
No man cannot hinder me in that great getting up morning. Oh, yes, I forgot. They're going to sing another one. I don't 
know what I'm talking about. again. Every eye, nor cross every teeth. 
Hung him high and they stretched him wide. For you and me, oh, our Savior, he died. That's love. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is love. Thank you, choir. And I want to thank God for Scotty and Brandon for their leadership and, and uh, letting the Holy Spirit use them in a mighty way. And I did get a, a name, uh, Tisha, Tisha. And, and Lord of mercy, not only can she beat the drums, the girl can sing too. <laughs> Yes, sir. Scotty, thank you for letting the Holy Spirit use you in such a mighty way. Didn't he do, didn't, uh, the Lord used him in a mighty way. We thank the Lord for this choir. Thank you, choir, for uh, that rendition. Today, I want to speak to your hearts for just a few minutes. I like to make the gospel of Christ practical. The hooping and the hollowing has its place, but sometimes we need to be taught the word of God so that you can have something that you can that can help you during the course of the week for the last few weeks we've been talking about love actually that is love and we've been coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 by now most of you may have figured it out that I'm taking a word at a time about love and so today, we're coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we are ending verse 5. And for those of you that would like to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you may do so now. And I'm going to read it out of the NIV version of the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I'll just start with verse 4 and start with the verse, part of verse five. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. We've talked about all of these things. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. 
It is not self-seeking. And today we're going to talk about this next portion. Love, it is not easily angered. It is not easily angered. Let's take a moment and go to the throne as we prepare our hearts for what the Lord has to say. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be here today singing songs of Zion, praying, hearing the word. We don't take for granted that this is the day that you rose from the grave, that all of us might have the opportunity to come to you in faith, to receive life and life to the full. Perhaps there's someone listening today, Lord, that needs a touch from heaven, needs to be saved. Someone else might need sanctification and Holy Ghost filled. Somebody, Lord, is here because it is Easter and they just wanted to show up and come to church. But let this be their day, day to receive something from you, O oh Lord. We ask that you would speak by way of your spirit. And I ask that you would empty me of me and fill me with thee. This is our prayer. We ask it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We indeed do pray and let everybody say amen. Amen. The title of my sermon today is Anger. 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 My brothers and sisters, I heard uh, Reverend Florence talk a little bit about anger. I say, isn't that ironic that he mentioned anger? There are so many people that are angry in our world today. In fact, all of us has, have to deal with it from time to time. But I want to tell you a quick story. This is a story about a man and a woman who had been married for over 60 years. They had shared everything except there was one secret in their marriage. The wife had a shoebox uh, in the top of her closet and she had cautioned her husband never to open it and never ask about it. He never did. But one day, his wife got sick. It was determined that she would not recover from this sickness. And as they began to sort out her affairs, the story says that the husband took the shoebox down out of the closet and he took it to his wife. They agreed it was time that she should explain the box. When he opened it, he found two crocheted dolls and a stack of money totaling $25,000. He lovingly asked his wife uh, about the contents. She responded by saying, just before we got married, my grandmother told me that the secret of a happy marriage was never to argue. She told him that if I ever got angry with you, I should be quiet and crochet a doll. The husband was moved to tears as he looked at the two dolls lying in the box. Only twice in all of our marriage did he thought in his mind, she's gotten angry with me. But what about the money? How did you manage to save all of that money? She said, she said, oh, she answered. She said, that money, that is the money I made from selling the dolls. <laughs> My question to you today, how much money would you have 
if you were paid every time that you got angry. Help me, Holy Ghost. We all get angry. And contrary to what some believe, anger is not a sin. I didn't hear an amen anywhere. Listen, my brothers and sisters, anger is a God-given emotion that can either serve you well or it can get you in a lot of trouble, depending on how you handle it. We're told that there were over 375, around 375 times in the scripture that God got angry. Oh, it could go from Moses to Nehemiah, from Ze uh, uh, Ezra to Jesus. We are continue, constantly told about the times of individuals' anger in the scripture. The real issue, my brothers and sisters, is what do you do when you become angry? How do you deal with your anger? Huh? Does your anger result in sinfulness or does it result in a, or a God honoring behavior? Sinful behavior or God honoring behavior? You see, my brothers and sisters, negative or sinful anger is expressed in a number of ways. Uh huh. Yes, there are maniacs out here. Uh huh. Who tend to explode and they tend to yell and scream and, and act like raging lunatics. If you ever seen one get mad and, and, and make a fool out of themselves, that's the person I'm talking about. But you also have folk that are mute. In other words, they don't say a word. Uh, they silently burn on the inside. It's like it, 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 this is the, 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 the crock pot. A uh, version of anger where one steams and stews while denying that they are even angry. Of course, everyone knows that type. Yes, those are the ones you better be careful about too. Ah, uh, yes, and then you have people that are more like a martyr, if you will, when they get angry. These are the professionals uh, at throwing pity parties. And if you read the scriptures carefully, this was the one in the scripture where the older brother in Luke 15 became so angry at his younger brother. We're talking about the prodigal son. But he got angry about his brother coming back. He had a little pity party. Uh-huh. And then you got folk that are manipulators when it comes to anger. This is the Lee Iacocca uh, version of anger uh, whose attitude is, I don't get mad. I get even. You see the Pharisees in Jesus' day who, uh, who in frustration turn on Jesus, th that gives us a good idea of that kind of anger. See, my brothers and sisters, displaced anger, and some people can displace their anger. They can be mad at their boss and go home and slap their wife. Y'all don't hear me? Kick the dog fuss at the children but they're mad that's called displacing your anger you're mad at somebody over here but you take it out on somebody else am i right about it oh yes and you could displace that anger because of lost jobs friendships ruined or spiritual spirituality destroyed your health and vitality and the joy that's been taken away my brothers and sisters we need to be careful when it comes to our anger yes Yes, God has an answer about our anger. I want to share four things before I take my seat. Now, let me talk to you for a moment. First thing that I'd like to share with you, sudden anger is to be controlled. Sudden anger is to be controlled. It is the fact that people who fly into a rage seldom make a good landing. See, Solomon had much to say about this, my brothers and sisters, in the book of Proverbs. He said, a quick-tempered man does foolish things. A hot-tempered man stirs up dissensions. A quick-tempered man displays folly. This is different places in the book of Proverbs. A fool gives full vent to his anger. You see, my brothers and sisters, you've got to learn how to control your anger. And those of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ, you ought to have your anger in check. 
You see, love is not easily anger. It did not say love does not or you never get angry because we all get angry at, from time to time. But we've got to know how to act when we're angry. I don't know about you, but uh, you got to know how to respond. Uh, I, I, I think I read something that Thomas Jefferson said something to this effect. He said, if you become angry, count to 10. But he said, if you are very angry, count to 100. Am I right about it? I heard somebody else quoting it. They must have known about that quote. But the fact of the matter is, you need to take a time out. You send your children in time out, you need to go take a time out. And not let anger get the best of you. You see, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, whether it's the loss of your health or loss of friends or your dignity, Solomon said it best when he uh, stated that a hot-tempered man must pay the penalty, he says. Even when it is obvious to others, it's hard to admit that one has acted foolishly while in anger. Have you ever seen somebody, they said, I was so angry, I don't even remember what I did. I don't remember what I, what did I say? Did I say that? Help me, Holy Ghost. I tell you, we live among our angry people today. And some of us, we need to also uh, work on our anger situation. You see, denying your anger is a problem. We need to recognize I've got an anger problem. You see, I, I, I'm a counselor in school. One of the things, that, and I see students come to me all the time, and some of them uh, lash out in anger. And I tell them, and I say, you know, what's the concern that you have here? They may be mad at their mom or their daddy or whatever the situation, or their friends or whatever. And I said, guess what? If you don't control that anger, anger will control you. you got to get control of that situation. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's, we don't need to be in denial. You see, if we deny one that denies his anger, it's like putting a burning trash can in a closet and closing the door. You see, the old be what will happen. You have damage and you have disaster that will follow. Before there's a crisis uh, caused by your rage or your anger, then you need to get it in check. Before reaching anger, consider the acronym Ford. Ford. I love Fords. I've been driving Ford all my life. Chevrolet, y'all all right, but I love Ford. I just, I've just been a Ford man. All right, so, uh, so let me just ask, okay, let, before we reach it, reacting in anger, I want you to consider this acronym forward as I indicated and ask the following questions. How do I, that first one is feel. How do I feel? How do I feel? Well, you feel anger. Huh? So that the O is what are my options? See, sometimes we don't think before we react. We'll act or react and then think but it's too late i said the other week that if you take if i, I was I, 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 some, my wife and i were working on the yard that's why she's not in the choir today because she's not feeling her very best praise god but that's all right we're working out in the yard putting rocks out there and sometimes you find an ant hill and when you find an ant hill if you disturb that ant hill guess what the ants are going to come out they're going to go to left right they go all over the place and there is nothing you can do to put those ants back. Praise God. But if you want to control those ants, you've got to think before you react and stepping on it and so forth. And the same thing with your anger. You must think before you react. Because if you, if you react and say something out of order, if you react and do something out of order, then you may affect the relationship and it will never be the same. I don't care if you're so, your husband or your wife or your children or your neighbor or someone. You may say something that you regret, but you just like the ants in the anthill. You can't put it back. So how do I feel? <laughs> and you got to consider your options. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't have to uh, uh, do what I'm, 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 I'm feeling right now. Yes, I don't have to do it that way. You have to consider other options. So that R in for is what is the right thing to do. Think about what the right thing is to do. I will let God's spirit guide me on this one. And that's why we need to go to the cross. And Lord, I'm angry around about now. I've thought about my options, but I want to do the right thing. And I want to do the right thing by the person that I'm angry with. Folks, stop blaming your anger on somebody else. 
Guess what? Anger is a choice. Yes, we choose to get angry. You say, Pastor, I don't know, no, no. He made me angry. She made me angry. Well, let me show you. Let me, let, can I give you a quick example? <laughs> yes. Say you and your husband, uh, you, you and your spouse, your significant other are arguing like cats and dogs at each other. Y'all are on top of each other just, and the phone rings. The phone rings. You pick up the phone. You don't display that anger. All of a sudden, you shift from being angry. Hey, darling, how you doing? All is well. We're doing fine. You, know, you see, you make a choice to get angry, and you choose to come out of that anger, and then as soon as you hang the phone back up, where were we? <laughs> anger is a choice. And if you don't control it, it'll control you. The second principle that I'd like to share with you is sin for anger is to be condemned. Sin for anger is to be condemned. When it comes to what we do with our anger, we are too, far too easy on ourselves. We make excuses after excuse after excuse for our harsh uh, temperaments and want others to overlook our sinful attitudes and actions. Y'all don't hear me? We need to call it for what it is. Uh, it's not just a weakness. It is wickedness. Y'all don't hear me? It is not a minor flaw. It is a moral failure. And for those who excuse their sin for anger by saying, it just runs in my family. Well, <laughs> you need to open your eyes and see that you are of your father, the devil. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I done touched somebody the wrong way. It isn't hereditary. No, no, no. The devil, the devil, you can say the devil made me do it all you want to. Praise be to God. I tell you, it is a godless habit. You've gotten into the habit of becoming angry. And you, the same way you got in the habit, you can come out of the habit. Yes, it's a horrible. It's horrible when you're angry. It's hurtful when you're angry. It may result in you being lost and destroying your Christian witness before other people. You were wondering how you can know if your anger is sinful. Then uh, you might want to honestly answer the, the, these questions, if you will. Do I have the right to be angry? Do I have the right? You know who asked that question? Oh, well, God asked Jonah that question. Jonah uh, was uh, out there, and God told him to go preach. He finally obeyed God. I'm not going to tell the whole story, but he finally obeyed God. And when God saved the people, Jonah became angry. Yes, and then God allowed a tree to grow in the midst of that desert place. And it was so hot, uh, he allowed the tree to grow, and Jonah was under the tree. He was happy about that tree because that tree provided shade. I could feel the wind blowing right now, providing him for what he needs. But the next day, the Bible said God sent a worm and allowed that worm to chew, the, uh, chew that tree up, and it withered. And so, therefore, Jonah came out the next day, and there was no uh, tree there uh, to give him the shade. And he began became angry and God asked the question do you have a right to be angry you angry about this tree when there are thousands of people souls are at stake and you are angry about me having compassion and love on these individuals I tell you folks sometimes we're angry about stuff we ain't got no business being angry about now there are some things we need to be angry about Social injustice, we need to be angry about. Yes, our children running wild, we need to be angry about. But we need to do things appropriately. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this for you, those of you that are sitting here, if you walk out on me right now, it's all right with me. But I got to preach the truth. Men, don't you put your hands on your women. Women, don't you put your hand in anger. Don't you put your hands on those men. Parents, be careful about putting your hands on your children in anger. That was free. It's inappropriate to do so in anger. Two more points, my brothers and sisters. Stubborn anger is to be conquered. Stubborn anger, uh, anger is to be conquered. In Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, uh, Solomon gives so much wisdom when it comes to anger. In Proverbs 19.11 tells us that one of the most glorious uh, things that we can do is to overlook an offense. How many of you have been offended by somebody? The Bible says overlook it. Overlook it. Some of you are carrying anger from the past. Overlook it. <laughs> come, come on, somebody. Some of y'all have been married before, and, and, and they hurt you 
Jerry, deeply. Uh, praise God. Now, I'm not saying overlook it, but you got to move on with your life. You need to move on to bigger and better things. God saved you. You got to let that be your past. Praise be to God and move on in your life because God wants to do something special inside of you. Stop carrying uh, uh, abuse from your past. Or uh, maybe somebody didn't treat you right. And you're still carrying that unforgiveness in your heart. Maybe somebody didn't do you right. And you're still irritated. And you want to get even with them. But I stopped by here to tell you, that's not the righteous anger of God. That's human anger. And James 1 and 20 says that human anger does not Work the righteousness of God. I tell you, you need to not work in your humanness, but work in the spirit. Ask yourself the question, do I have a right to be anger, angry? James, uh, I mean, Ephesians 4, 26 explains that uh, when anger is an issue, we must deal with it quickly. It tells us to deal with it right now. But don't let the sun go down. Uh, wow, you're angry. you're angry. The Bible says, in other words, you should not go to bed at night angry you should not take that to bed get it right with your husband get it right with your wife get it right with your sister or your or your your significant other do not take that stuff to bed when you might not wake up in the morning you don't know get it right with god and that's what Ephesians tells us. Yes, anger will give you the devil a foothold in your life. Yes, it'll lead to un unwelcome, or may I say unwholesome un talk. It'll digress into bitterness and rage and, uh, and, and brawling and slander and malice and unkind, unforgiving spirit. And if you want to be delivered today, brothers and sisters, you've got to deal with it. In Proverbs 16 and 32, we learn that, uh, that the one that controls his anger is greater than the one who is a warrior. You are better than a warrior who conquers a city. It can be done, my brothers and sisters. We must recognize the sin that is there. Repent of our failures and renounce Satan himself. You tell the devil that he is a liar. You allow him in. Now it's time to put him out. Y'all don't hear me. I said you allow the devil to come in, but now it's time to put him out. 1 John 4 and 4 tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So through godly choices, relying on God's power, conquer the control of your anger right now because God has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. Yes, sir, he rolls on this day and he rolls in victory and you have victory over your anger today. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. And finally, final, sanctified anger. Did y'all hear what I said? Sanctified anger. I said it's all right to get angry, but as long as you're angry in the right way, sanctified anger is to be channeled. Sanctified anger is to be channeled. It isn't always a sin to be angry, my brothers and sisters, as I indicated to you. In fact, sometimes it is a sin not to get angry. You notice that some people are I'm never angry. Praise God. I, all of us get angry sometimes. Oh, yes, we do. Uh, you may not be, be prone to get angry, but we get angry. One of the best indicators of our character is, uh, is, is, is looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. He never sinned, but Jesus himself got angry. He got angry because of the people in the temple selling in the temple. He got angry with the Pharisees for the way. He didn't get angry for what people did to him. See, some of us get mad because she don't like me. I don't like her either. I'm angry with her. Uh, so what? They were angry with Jesus. That's not why Jesus got angry. Jesus got angry by the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the old people were treating the other people. Sometimes they will come up with laws, but they wouldn't even lift one finger to do it themselves. I stopped by here to tell you, stop getting angry over a foolish thing. If you're going to get angry, get angry over righteous things. Get angry over sin. Get angry over all of those things that will uh, not help us in our spirituality. Praise God, as I indicated, social injustice. Get angry over the politicians who are not doing the right thing, then vote them out. Get angry over our local politicians or whatever. Let's get angry about the right things, and let's do right. When it comes to anger, when angry, angry. You see, Jesus did become angry over this insensitivity of the hurts and the needs of the people. And from the, uh, from, from, uh, the, um, 
that was an old uh, show. Anybody remember Amos and Andy episodes? Andy comes walking along with a huge budge on his coat. And when Amos, uh, where Andy comes along, and when Amos asked him about that budge on his, um, on his coat, he uh, asked him, he explained that there was a guy that every time he passed this guy, he would thump him on the chest. He said his solution was this. So what I did was I strapped right here a stick of dynamite on my chest. And the next time that he thumps it, it's going to blow his hand off. Lord, have mercy. Obviously, what Andy did not realize was that blowing the man's hand off would also result in blowing his heart out. That's exactly what anger does. Uh, yes, yeah, sure, we hurt another. But more importantly, we blow our own hearts out. Does your anger need to be controlled? Does your anger need to be condemned? Does your anger need to be conquered? Does your anger need to be channeled? I challenge you today. Channel, channel your anger in the right way. Give it to God and let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do in your life. Yes, love does not show that kind of anger, especially that human anger that is inappropriate. And if you're a person that's prone to get anger, stop blaming your parents and your, uh, and your family. Anger is something that Satan gives us. He wants us to stay angry. You ever seen somebody and they come in your presence and you say, oh, God, here come that angry Negro. Let's make sure we control our anger. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. I know some of y'all want me to hoop and holler, but this is hooping and hollering. I'm hooping and hollering the word, the word. That's what you need, the word, the content. And maybe something has been said today. And if you're struggling with your anger, I pray that you get on your knees this week and say, God, I heard the pastor. I need to be in control. I'm out of control at school. I won't listen to the administrators. I won't listen to SROs or anybody. SROs are security at, at schools. SROs, I won't listen to anybody. I won't even listen to the counselors. They're all of them make me sick. But I want you to know today that you can control that. How do I know? Pastor Lowry used to carry a lot of anger. And oftentimes, some of this anger may be caused, be caused, uh, caused by the fact that some of us have been raised by one parent. And most of the time, it's the mother. And a lot of young men are angry with their fathers for not being around. Same thing with young ladies. But whatever the situation, I don't care what your background, I know that God can conquer that anger and he can cast into the sea of forgetfulness. How do I know? Because he did it for me. And when I was angry with my father, I came to the realization, you know what? At the end of the day, when I found out more about him, I said it was, get, it was a good thing that he wasn't in my life because I probably, he would have either killed me or I may have killed him. Because if he had hit my mama, woo, he hit mama, that would have been the end of it, <laughs> especially if I was big enough to take care of myself. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, regardless of whether you're angry with your father, your mother, your sisters, your brothers, so forth, seek forgiveness yourself from Almighty God. Deal with your anger. Deal with those issues in your life. Deal with it wholeheartedly. If you're a Christian in particular, God can help you in this situation. Am I right about it? Let's give the Lord a hand clap one more time. If you will, stand right where you are. We open the doors of the church. Perhaps there's someone here today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Then we invite you to come to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You can ask him for forgiveness of your sins and he will forgive you right now. You don't have to carry that burden any longer. You can talk to him about anything and everything. You are his and he is yours he can be yours right now then if that's you we want you to come down the aisle the deacon is standing here to talk to you about your relationship with the Lord and he will lead you in a prayer he'll lead you to the scripture to talk about how you can be forgiven of your sins perhaps there's someone else that's here today that would like to join First Baptist Church 
then we invite you to come. You already a Christian, but you say, hey, I need to be a part of a church in this community. Then we invite you to come right now. You can come on your Christian experience. You could come by way of letter from your former church. Or you could just come as you are. Then we will receive you. You may come at this time. I'm going to give you the opportunity to respond to this gospel call, but this choir is going to sing a couple of verses of a song to give you the opportunity to respond. The invitation has come. No one came. But perhaps you desire prayer. Just slip your hand up. You don't have to walk the aisle. Just slip your hand up right where you are. Praise God. God sees your heart. He sees your hand. You can take your hands down now. We're going to pray about those concerns. Only God can fix it. Only God can do something about it. With every head bowed and our hearts directed towards heaven. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for this sacred moment. This resurrection morn, morning, this opportunity to come before your throne of grace, to give you thanks for being the great I am in all of our lives. We don't take for granted the blessings that you have given unto us. You've given us families. You've given us friends. You've given us possessions. You've given us so much. 
You've even given us a country where no bombs are just flying around us and buildings being blown up. But we do indeed pray for them as well, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way. Lord, we ask that you would have your way among your people this morning. You saw the hands that went up. You know the needs in their hearts and lives. We ask that you would meet that need, those needs, at this very hour. Touch them, Lord. Touch them as only you can. For, Lord, we pray for each and every one of them. And maybe somebody is standing for someone else that's not here today. Oh, God, touch them wherever they are. And if there's someone that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, may they come before him today in their home. Those that are listening online, those that are listening around the community, we pray, dear Lord, that you would touch with your healing hand. Bring wholeness to us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and in every way. Have your way, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord, for the lesson on anger. And if we're struggling with it, Lord, we pray that you would give us victory to not allow the sun to go down while we're angry. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in us. Help us to be better husbands and wives, significant others. Help us to be better children, to be obedient to our parents. Help us, Lord, to be better church members, to get along with one another, not to express with inappropriate anger, but to love on each other, that agape love that only God can give. We give your name thanks, Lord, for being present with us today in this service and for answering our prayers. We give your name praise, glory, and honor for being the God that you are. Speak to our circumstances and our situations. Our health is in your hands. Our personhood is in your hands. We are in your hands totally and wholeheartedly. We give our children to you, our grandchildren to you. They belong to you, Lord. They're in your hands. Some of them are, may not be listening to us. But, Lord, we know that you still can change hearts. You can change that husband, that wife. You can change, Lord, neighbors. You can change our community. You can do so many marvelous things. We ask that you do these things. For it is our prayer. And we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We indeed do pray. And let everyone say amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. What a wonderful near the cross. Praise God. We're going to prepare ourselves for our offering now. We want you to be as liberal as you possibly can. As the ushers come forward uh, to lift up the offering, let me say for those of you that are listening online, please send your offering to First Baptist Church, uh, P.O. Box. Four thirty-two. I had it mixed up with the Alliance. Uh, Four thirty-two, P.O. Box four thirty-two, Fuquay, Verena. That's spelled F-U-Q-U-A-Y. Verena, V-A-R-I-N-A, North Carolina, two seven five two six. Again, you can send it to that address, or you can go online, and we have PayPal. Please uh, govern yourselves accordingly. You can go to First Baptist F.V. Dot com and, uh, and pay by PayPal. Praise God. Give as unto the Lord. As the choir sings a song, let us give as unto the Lord. The Bible says God loves a cheerful gift. You put your hands together. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. are mindful of me that you 
love me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing who am I that A friend of God, a friend of God, he called me, I am a friend of God, a friend of God, I'm a friend of God, he called me. Amen. Remain standing. Again, to our visiting friends, we're so happy that you have come. Please come again when you get an opportunity. God bless you. And to all of you, may the Lord bless you. Remember, anger, it can, it's not a sin. It needs to be used, utilized appropriately. Praise be to God. But make sure it's that righteous type of anger. Amen? Amen. And now we're ready to go home. And now 
May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forever. Let everybody say, yeah. everybody say, yeah. everybody say, yeah. go in peace, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>